All right, let's just dive right into this one. We have to get the overall structure of the text. So just read it, get a general vibe about what's going on. Uh, this person, a historian and citizen of the Choctaw Nation, has identified a dilemma inherent to research on the status of women in her tribe during the 1600s and 1700s. The primary sources from that era, travel narratives and other accounts by male European colonizers, underestimate the degree of power conferred on Choctaw women by their traditional roles in political, civic, and ceremonial life. Holy cow, that's quite the sentence. It's like half the passage, at least more than that. But I get that there's a there's a problem, right? A dilemma is a is a problem. And so uh, the sources underestimate women, right? Strong words pop out right there. That's, that's my dumb summary in a way. Well, let's see what the last sentence says. Uh, this person argues that the Choctaw oral tradition and findings from archaeological sites in the tribe's homeland supplement the written record by providing crucial insights into those roles. So the primary sources underestimate women, but... Um, this kind of feels like a but. Notice uh, these other things um, supplement the written record. So, okay, I, you know, let's see what they say. Uh, a, uh, the overall structure details the shortcomings of certain historical sources. Sure, okay, I like that. Uh, then argues that research should avoid those sources. No, it does not say that. The first part is 100% correct. It definitely details the shortcomings of the, I guess, the primary sources um, because they're written by men. Um, but then the second part is not right. It does not argue that you should avoid those sources. It just says they should be supplemented with something else. Supplemented means almost like helped. So we have the sources that we have that have a flaw, but we should also look at some other sources to kind of make up for that flaw. So it doesn't say to get rid of the original sources. That's a much bigger claim. So that that's much stronger than what the passage is actually saying. Uh, B, it describes a problem that arises in search on a particular research on a particular topic. I agree that that's basically saying the same thing that choice A is saying at the first part, um, then sketches a historian's approach to addressing that problem. Now turn that into a question. What is this historian's approach? It's to supplement the written record with these other types of sources. The fact that I can turn that half of the choice into a question and then answer that question just by like pointing to something in the passage, that's a really, really good sign that we have proven that answer choice correct. Obviously, I'm not going to just go ahead and pick it, but uh, you know, I'm already, it's the front runner for sure. C, it lists the advantages of a particular research method. No, it starts with the word dilemma. Dilemma means there's a problem. And so it's not the advantages. So this is just as simple as the connotation is off. Right? Maybe it gets positive down here at the end, but certainly the, the, the main part of this passage is there is a problem, so it is not the advantages of that method. The method has a flaw. It is a, that creates a dilemma and then acknowledges historians' criticism of that method. Well, maybe the, the first part is a criticism of this particular method, but again, this is, this is kind of flipping things around. Maybe this is kind of going from positive to uh, negative, right? So positive to negative the passage is going from negative to positive. So connotations maybe help a little bit with choice C. D, it characterizes a particular topic as especially challenging to research. Maybe, maybe it's challenging. Why is it challenging? It's challenging because there's all these male sources and we're trying to research women. Okay, maybe. Then suggest a related topic for historians to pursue instead. No, they're not pursuing a related topic. They are pursuing the same topic by looking at different sources. So we have not switched topics. So I would say this is a great example of a choice that's kind of like 95% correct, but there's one little piece that's not right. And that's really the name of the game for the entire SAT reading section is the wrong answers are not going to be obviously wrong in most cases. They're going to be mostly right. And our job is to notice the one piece that makes it wrong. And so that's why you have to really pay attention to strong words in the choices, strong words in the passage, and 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 not just pick the first thing that kind of feels right, because you're what you're really looking for is the piece of that that's wrong. And, and it could be 90%, 95% correct, but if it's 10%, 5% wrong, it's 100% wrong. So that's what's happening here. We, we just, you know, we have, a, I think choice B is very clearly the right answer, but I definitely think choice D is meant to lure us in. So hopefully you noticed what I noticed and didn't fall for that trap.